All right, this is uh, pre-algebra, lesson 10.1, so new chapter on statistics. Uh, this first part here will go through a lot of definitions. Uh, some of these you'll see again, and so uh, you want to pretty much get the big picture from, from these definitions, okay? That's what we're after, kind of the big picture. Uh, statistics, so 10.1, what is a statistic? It's a measure calculated by a sample of data. So it's something you're going to calculate, and we'll talk about that on the uh, second page of our notes, okay? So I got to get through some terms first that help us to understand the data and those kinds of things. All right, so number two, a population. A population. All right, you should all know what population is from history and just from common sense. The population are the people that are in a city, a state, a country, etc. So when you talk about a population involving data, then we're talking about um, what we're talking about is all of the things in consideration for the data. That's called a population. Okay, so all possible parts of the data that's being collected is part of the population. Um, you know, if you're talking about farmers, then the population would be would be all possible farmers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right. So, uh, population and entire set of objects that share similar characteristics. That share similar characteristics. <coughs> Excuse me. From which data can be collected and analyzed. Analyzed, A-N-A-L-Y-Z-E-D, analyzed. In other words, take the data and draw some conclusions from the data. Learn some things from the data. Um, figure out some things because of the data. Okay, analyzed. And, of course, this happens all the time. Uh, statistics are used to analyze all kinds of things. Uh, a lot of you are familiar with sports, modern-day sports, and statistics are used uh, constantly now in modern-day sports, whether it's a basketball team, a football team, etc. They're going to collect data. Uh, maybe you're collecting data on the uh, PSI of a football. Uh, just uh, threw that in there. No, maybe you're collecting data on um, how many tips you get in a basketball game, your defensive tips. There's all kinds of possibilities. And so um, the population. So the population is the entire uh, set of objects that share similar cons uh, characteristics from which data can be collected and analyzed. Um, some of the examples of a population here. Let me pull this down a little bit more here. Oh, would be humans. All right, that would be a population. Uh, I like this one, Republicans. By the way, there's no salvation in any political party. I only like a Republican that would share my views. If a Democrat shares my views on abortion and some other areas, I would make me happy. Females. Females maybe might be the uh, population. Farmers. Etc. 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 There's a lot of different things you can put in there. All right. When a measure is calculated using data from the entire population, in other words, you use all the data from all the population, then it's called a parameter. Now you might say, let me spell that a little bit better for you here. P A R A M. E T E R. Sorry about that. Got sloppy there at the end. Parameter. Uh, let me give you an example. Let's go with the farmer thing. Let's say you're talking about um, uh, the population is all farmers worldwide. Okay. Now let's get more specific and uh, let's talk about just farmers in the U.S. Well, farmers in the U.S. wouldn't be considered a parameter because it's not the entire population. Okay. The entire population, when it's used, it's called a parameter. B, when a measure is calculated using data from a portion, a portion of the population, it is called a sample. Okay, and that's important, a sample. 
Uh, you'll hear this term a lot with political campaigns and polling data from political campaigns. And they'll talk about the sample size and things like that. Uh, in other words, something like this. Um, when they take a poll, they would sometimes do a telephone poll. And so they'll call individuals. And uh, they will call them and perhaps they're doing a poll on, on a certain issue. And so they would make the call. They would ask the person, uh, usually their party affiliation. And let's suppose they're only going to um, sample Democrats. And so they would only sample Democrats. Now, would they call every single Democrat in the country or in the region or the county? Of course not. They're going to call a certain number of the Democrats from the certain number that they call. And there's all kinds of statistics and, and how many to call and where to call to get a good representation. Um, that would be a sample. They don't they don't pull everybody yet. They draw conclusions from the sample. All right. So you'll hear that word a lot. Keep your ears open for it, and you'll hear it a good amount of time. All right. So the sample size must be large enough to trust the estimate. Um, if I wanted to take a poll in the class here, and what, what are there? There's 36 in the class, and so if I just ask two people their opinion, and then from the from the two people decide that that's the whole class's opinion, that wouldn't be true. That wouldn't be accurate. That would be foolish. And uh, so uh, now the bigger the group, then um, of course you're going to need a decent size sample size, but less percentage. The smaller the group, the, the higher percentage you need to really get an accurate understanding of how the people would vote or what the people would think or what the what you can conclude from the data is a better way to say it. Uh, the sample participants the sample participants must represent the population accurately. The sample participants must represent the population accurately. Look, there's there's the average. There are always um, some that are far to the, we'll say, right and left. But there are always f people that are far to one extreme or far to the other extreme. And it's the same way with data. And so you got to be careful with your sample. If, you, if, if I were doing a sample on, um, let's see, if I were doing a sample on immigration, let's say that, and, and all I did was I went to... Um, I went to those that are of a certain nationality and just talked to them, I wouldn't get a accurate representation of the population. So you got to be careful. All right, enough of that. I'm getting in trouble there. I keep thinking of all these examples off the top of my head. Okay, number three, uh, the four types of sampling. There are four types of sampling. Well, the first one is called a random sampling. And again, if you'll keep your ears open, when you, when, especially when we get toward elections again, you'll hear these terms, a random sampling. Usually it's a computer program that randomly picks from the population. Uh, you just pick at random. Uh, you, you're not, there, there's no method to your picking. There's no, you know, you don't say, I'm going to get all these people. You just randomly, just it's just per chance. Um, when you do a random sampling, then that's going to allow you um, to have a more accurate sampling there, random sampling. Then you can have a systematic sampling. Systematic sampling. Um, what is it? It's a methodological step-by-step -step process of picking the population. A step-by-step -step process. You know, you can do the, the houses on a street and you can do every third house. So we're going to sample every third house. Okay, well, that's that's systematic. It's not really random. Uh, we decided we're going to do every third house. You can have a list of names and say we're going to do um, we're going to do every um, out of every ten, we're going to do the ninth name. And so you're systematically picking the ninth name out of every ten. Then there's convenience, convenience, c o n v i e n i e n c e, convenience sampling. And that word same should be sample here. First edition notes, sorry about that. Convenience sampling is choosing the sample due to ease. You say, yeah, I like that one. Yeah, I know, but uh, it's not always the best one. And then the last one is cluster. 
Cluster sampling is a random sampling, so it is random. You're picking um, just at random, but it's sampling of groups. Of groups, so cluster sampling would be a sampling of groups. Okay. So out of all of that, the, the couple keys there are really random sampling, the idea of sampling. What is a sample? It's a portion of the population. That's important to know. Uh, the word parameter is a nice word, but uh, really sample and population and data are the keys there. Um, if you can get those down, that'll be great. All right, let's go to the second page of our notes. So this is really the, the meat of this lesson, and really here is most of the testable data um, that's funny, I used the word data. Here's most of the testable material for, from Lesson 10.1 is right here. So interpreting statistical data. So I've got two examples here, if you, if you see there, example one and example two, and we use those examples to help illustrate uh, the things that I want you to understand and I want you to know. All right, the first st statistical term is the range. And you should have a good idea of what the range is already. What is the range? It's simply the greatest minus the least. So you're looking at data, and it would be the greatest piece of data minus the least. So if you look at uh, example one, what's the largest number? 103. What's the smallest number? 85. And so we're just going to subtract. And so the range is 18. If you look at data set 2, uh, what's our greatest piece of data? 13. Our smallest is 2. What's the range of that data? It's 11. It just depends on what the data is. Um, numerical data is going to have a range. If it's not numerical data, it won't have a range. Next, number 2. All right, I'm going to fill in the second part first here, the second blank. This is the arithmetic average. The arithmetic average, same, you're commonly called the average, and that's what you always hear it as, the average. So the average, anybody know the statistical term for average? Anything come to mind? I'll give you a hint, it begins with an M, the statistical term for the average. All right, and if you thought mean, then you were correct. It's called the mean. The mean is the average. You have to keep those two together. That's really, 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 really important that you put those two together here. you got to put the mean together with the average, okay? Keep those two together, and uh, that will be good. I'll use the term mean a lot, and I'll expect you to know that you are finding the average because I asked you to find the mean. All right, so the mean is the arithmetic average, and of course, you should remember how to do an average. What do you do? You add the data and divide by the number of pieces of data, right? You add the data and divide by the number of pieces of data. So let's go ahead and do example number one. So example number one, here's how you figure it out. You do the 103 plus the 92 plus the 89 plus the 85, right? And then you're going to count that's one, two, three, four, four pieces of data. Now, I don't need to see this as part of your work in finding the mean. But if you notice right next to it, I say always show this step, and that's the step that's going in the box. So you have to add up the top, the numerator. I always want to see what you get when you add everything up. Now, be careful. You're punching this into a calculator. You can punch in a wrong number. If you punch in a wrong number, you're guaranteed to get the problem wrong. So make sure that you show me what total you get for the top and show me the number you are dividing it by. So we, I, we ended up with 369 divided by 4. Now, if you read your calculator, we're going to leave it to two places because that's an exact number. 92.25 was the mean. All right, so again, when you see the word mean, you're thinking I have to find the average. I have to add all the data and divide it by the number of pieces of data. I always want to see this step. Always want to see this step. Always want to see that step. Okay? I don't need to see the previous one. I need to see what's in the box. So make sure you show that. 
Make sure you show that. Make sure you show that. Make sure you show that. All right, what's next? Number three. Number three, I'll, again, I'm going to do the second blank here, is the middle piece of data. Any idea what you call the middle piece of data? Um, if you think about uh, some roads, some roads have a concrete um, middle part, and we call that concrete middle the, and it would be the same word. And it does begin with an M as well. Anybody know what the term is for the middle piece of data? And it is the median. The median. So the median is the middle piece of data. Now, the way you figure out the middle piece of data is to depend upon whether you have an even amount of data or an odd amount of data. So in this first example, we have an even amount of data. There are four pieces of data. In the second example, we have an odd amount of data. So the first one, we have an even amount. The second, we have an odd. And we're going to find the median two different ways. When there is an even amount of data, there's no number in the middle. See, the middle would be right here, correct? There is no number in the middle. So how then do you get the middle piece of data? You have to average or find the mean of the two numbers in the middle. So this one, we have to do 92 plus 89 divided by 2, which I'm going to show my step, right? which is 181 divided by 2, and I get a 90.5. That's the median. It's not actually one of the pieces of data because there's an even amount of data. So be careful. That's what you got to do for a median with an even amount of data. Now, with an odd amount of data, it's easier. I just count the pieces of data. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Therefore, I know the fourth piece of data is the middle. One, two, three, four. That's the fourth piece of data. And again, you can check yourself, right? There are three pieces of data to the left and three pieces of data to the right. And so my median is 11, right? My median is 11. So here's one more. If you want to do it on your own, go ahead and do it. But I will tell you this, in a situation like this, Notice our data is not in, um, it's not in order. And you've got to put your data in order if you're going to be able to figure out the median. I like to go high to low. You can go low to high. So the 10, I always check it off when I use it. So I can keep track. There's the 7. What's the next highest? 4. Then I got a 2. I got a 1. And I got another 1. And even though I checked them, I like to count one, two, three, four, five, six pieces of data. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? You want to find the mean? Or, I'm sorry, the median? Go ahead and find the median of that data. Pause the video if you want to find it on your own. All right, so even amount of data. We got to average the two middle ones. Look, um, on something like this, most people could say the average is three, right? What's, what's the average of two numbers? Uh, a 4 and a 2, it's going to be a 3. If you can't do it in your head, add the 2 up. 4 plus 2 is 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. And so the median is 3. All right, need to get rid of my shade so I can go higher here. And the uh, last one, last one. And again, I'm going to, um, I am going to, on this one, give you the second word first. This term is the most often occurring or most frequent occurring data. So it's the data that occurs most often, the data that occurs most frequently. Anybody have any idea what the term is for the data that occurs most often or the data that occurs most frequently? Well, it begins with an M again. All right, and the term is the mode the mode. So the mode is the most often occurring piece of data. It's usually easy to see. We got three 11s. The mode would be 11. We got three 11s, two 7s, a 13 and a 2, 
11 occurs most often, most frequently, and therefore the mode is 11. So let me recap this page with you. Let me get my pen here going. There's all my choices. And that's what I want, some smiley faces. Okay, so don't forget the range. Just take the highest and subtract from it the lowest, right? The highest minus the lowest is the range. Always associate the word mean with the average. The mean is the average. The mean is the average. The mean is the average. Remember, how do you do an average? Add all the data. Divide by the number of pieces of data. Remember, I always want to see that step. I always want to see the total amount number and the bottom that you're going to, number that you're going to divide it by. I always want to see that. Uh, remember, what's what do we call the middle piece of data? It's the median. Remember, in this situation, it matters whether you have an even amount of data or if you have an odd amount of data. If you have an even amount of data, you have to average the middle two numbers. That will always be the case. It will always be the middle two numbers. If you have an odd amount of data, it's just simply the middle number. Okay, the median. And then the last one is the mode. And what is the mode? The mode is the data that occurs most often or most frequently. That is called the mode. All right, that's lesson 10.1 statistics. Have a great day.